Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. I thought I'd post here just the first lesson for uh, beginning cello, um, covering how to hold the instrument and also the two basic finger patterns for the left hand uh, to learn how to play in first position. So um, what we're going to be covering in this lesson is first of all how to sit. Um, you want to have a chair that is about up to the height of your knee. Um, that'll get you in a good uh, range to sit comfortably. Uh, basically you want to have your feet flat on the floor and sit up straight here. Uh, so don't lean back too much and definitely don't lean forward. Um, anyway, just kind of be comfortable. Um, the idea is to have your knees be below your hips and you should feel like you can stand up pretty effortlessly. So um, once you have that and you're comfortable with your chair, uh, then get your cello out. and. The first thing you'll notice about the cello is that we use an end pin here to help prop the instrument up. Um, it has a screw on the end that you can adjust this um, length of the end pin to your desired height. And uh, this will take a little bit of messing around with to get what's, what's the, the right height for you. But um, we'll kind of go over some points of reference I use to get set up with a beginner. Uh, this peg right here um, on the... Um, be your left side of the cello but my right side of the cello is the peg for the C string and you want that to go right behind your left ear um, and that'll be a good position for the cello there so that's the first reference point uh, the second reference point is right in the center of the bridge um, where the strings are held up uh, between the A and the G strings is the middle and you want that to be right in line with the center of U um, this will help you with um, just having the instrument in the right position for bowing. Um, lastly is the uh, what we call the C bouts here. They look like the letter C. Um, these go on the inside of your legs, on the inside of your knees. So the left lower C bout, the corner, is resting about you know three inches above my knee on the inside. And then this one, you just let your leg come over to the side to secure the other side of the cello. Um, and it'll rest probably a little higher. Just this, this all depends on your chair and everything else. So, uh, But the idea is to, to have that, and if you can move the cello with just your knees, then you know you have it um, secure and you're in a good playing position. So um, try to remember those points of reference. C peg behind the left ear and center of the bridge right in the middle of your body. And then your knees kind of come around to secure the instrument. Um, then you'll want to play around with the height of the end pin. Um, always when you lengthen your end pin, just rest your cello on your knees. Uh, and just play around with that until you get a good angle. Some cellos prefer a bit more horizontal and others uh, a bit more vertical. So um, again, this is a matter of preference and you'll see all kinds of different players with different styles and uh, angles of the, of the instrument. Um, <clears throat> The only other thing that I would do is, and you might notice from watching me hold the cello, is uh, you don't want it to be totally straight on, um, but have it angled a little bit off, so that way you're center, but the cello is angled to you. And then if you want to lean it a little bit towards the C string to make bowing on the A string a little easier, um, that's another tip that I like to, to use for beginners. Um, you basically want to make sure your knees are out of the way for your arm so that you can bow. Um, so today's lesson we're just going to talk about uh, plucking the strings and uh, the left hand finger patterns that we're going to learn for first position. Um, so let's go over the names of the strings and how to do pizzicato or plucking. So you want to take your right hand and uh, take your thumb and put, plant that on the side of the fingerboard down here, uh, maybe an inch or two away from the end. And then with your index finger uh, or your second finger, middle finger, um, Rest it on the string you want to pluck and pull the string to the right and let your finger rest on the next string down. Like that. And the names of the strings on the cello are A, D, G, C. And I use Atlanta, Drivers, Go Crazy, um, or Ants, Digging in the Dirt, Going Underground, All the Way to China. And that's how you do uh, pizzicato. Again, you can use middle finger if that's more comfortable, or, or index finger. Um, doesn't really matter. I see cellists do this all the time. Uh, sometimes when they're holding the bow, they might use uh, middle finger. It's an easier finger to lift off the bow. Um, or if they don't have a bow, they might just use index finger. 
So um, the main thing you want to get, uh, go for is that you're getting a good sound and you're getting the string to ring. So careful not to, to pluck up. It'll, it won't get quite as defined of a tone. Just pluck to the side and pull the string over. Um, and that's really is all there is to uh, plucking or pizzicato on the cello. Um, the next thing we're going to go over is how to set up your left hand. Um, and this is pretty easy actually. Uh, it just looks like you're holding a glass of water. Uh, so notice how thumb and middle finger are opposite each other. There. Um, and the fingers are fairly spread apart for first position. So that's generally the basic shape of the hand. Um, and so you want to take that and place this on your cello. Um, and if you don't have any tapes on your instrument, uh, then you'll have to do a little ear training here to get set up. Uh, we want to find what we call the octave on the cello. So if you pluck your open C string and you play fourth finger on the G string, they should match and be an octave apart. Um, once you have that octave there, uh, then you'll want to take a, a, one of these tapes that I have. Um, these are uh, crafting tape. I found it at Michael's, about five millimeters in width there. And just take one of those off and slide it under your strings to the spot of the instrument where you produce that octave. And uh, just check all the fingers. Make sure the octaves are good. Um, once you have that, then you can find a half step below. B is your third finger. And then a whole step below that is your first finger, which is A. Um, and then open G. So uh, put the other tapes there for third finger and first finger as well. And you will have the outline of first position all set up. Uh, I do like using finger tapes in the beginning. Just gives you a really good ballpark reference point to uh, to get some muscle memory ingrained, and then you'll also use your ear to really really fine tune. Um, so we maybe we should also cover how to tune the cello because that's important. Um, definitely get yourself a tuner of some kind. Um, I have a Korg CA2 tuner right here, uh, but there's many apps you can use on your phone. Um, to tune your instrument as well. And just make sure that it's calibrated to 440 hertz. And uh, what you can do is, if you're nowhere near an A, uh, then you would have to use your pegs. And when you're tuning with the pegs, uh, just make sure that you apply pressure in towards the scroll as you turn. And again, righty-tighty tightens the string and the other way, left counterclockwise, loosens the string. Um, for the A and D strings, I like to uh, have the cello facing me. I have a little more leverage with my right hand. And then for the other instrument, other strings, you can just have the cello this way and access the pegs there. So again, uh, make sure you apply pressure in this way um, while you're turning. Otherwise, the string can come unwound, and you'll have to restring your cello, which is not fun. Um, but uh, if it does happen to you, don't worry. Just put the string back on and rewind and just press in as you go. Um, great, so we've got uh, our finger tapes on and we're ready to learn how to pluck the first two finger patterns. So the first one I always teach everyone is four, three, one, open. Um, and this is always like to start from fourth finger and go down. I think it builds more structure to the hand um, than starting open and going up. Uh, but anyway, um, why don't you try it on the G string first? Four, three, one, open, four, three, one, open. And just practice that scale, the G scale. You can also practice just going back and forth. And the same thing here, four, three, one, open. do that on all the scales. Um, you'll notice you can play a one octave G scale that I just showed you. Um, you can also play a one octave D scale. And a one octave C scale. Um, just depending on which string you start on. So the D scale starts on the A string, fourth finger. The G scale starts on the D string, fourth finger G. And the C scale starts on the G string, fourth finger C. Um, 
So there's three scales and you can also play arpeggios with those scales without having to shift. Um, for C major, it's open, three, open G, four, open, three, open. Same finger pattern for G major, just go up a string. And D major, go up another string to D. And that's how you play your arpeggios. Um, also, keep in mind that how your fingers are curved here in first position when you're when you're pulling the string down. Um, tr don't try to play too flat and, and be careful of this happening with the fingers collapsing. This is a big thing I see uh, with beginners there. So, um, uh, also, um, if your left hand is not in a comfortable position, make sure that you don't have the cello down on your shoulder. A lot of times I see beginners playing like this and they're never quite comfortable. They have to twist um, and they get this left arm kind of broken down right here. So make sure you have some space between shoulder and the scroll of the cello uh, when you're holding the instrument. That's very important. Um, that way your left hand can comfortably play here uh, on the fingerboard. So after you've learned those uh, scales and arpeggios there with 4-3-1 open finger pattern, uh, then you're ready to learn the second finger pattern, which uses second finger. So again, we have four, two, one, open, one, two, four. So your second finger is going to be in between third finger tape and the first finger tape. It's right in between, and it'll actually be closer to first finger than to third finger. And notice if I left, then I'll play that second finger a little sharp. So you have to adjust keep it closer to one. The same thing goes for when you're playing third finger, keep it closer to four. Ideally, if our hand was made where these two fingers were evenly spaced, then that wouldn't be a problem, but these fingers like to hang out together naturally, so just know that you have to compensate a little bit. Three and four are buddies, one and two are buddies. So um, that's your other finger pattern, four, two, one, open, one, two, four. And with both finger patterns combined, you can now play a two octave scale on the cello. So you start from open C, and you play a two octave C major scale. Open, one, three, four. Open, one, three, four. Open, one, two, four. Open, one, two. Is the two octave C major scale. Um, arpeggio, open, three, open, four, one, four, two. Two, four, one, four, open, three, open. Uh, so that's C major two octave. Um, another really fun scale I like to teach in the beginning, uh, believe it or not, is a D Dorian scale um, that you can play with those two finger patterns. And I'll show you what that sounds like. We start on first finger D, the C string, and play one, three, four, open, one, three, four, open, one, two, four, open, one, two, four. And that's what a D Dorian scale sounds like. It's kind of like minor, but you have a raised six scale degree um, to make it sound a little different. Uh, but this scale is really popular in jazz and Irish music and feel free to make up some stuff with it. It's kind of fun to just mess around with. Um, and just all, you can do all kinds of things with that scale. Um, the last scale I suggest you practice is just a one octave F major. Uh, starts on fourth finger F on the C string. Four, open, one, two, four, open, one, two. And the arpeggio, four, one, four, two, four, one, four. So um, that goes over all the first position scales and arpeggios that I have for you um, with those first two basic finger patterns. Um, I'll have uh, sheet music here for, with this lesson. You can feel free to download that and uh, look at it um, to help you kind of learn how to read. 
um, as well as a uh, sheet with the open strings of the cello there. Um, so if you like this video, uh, please be sure to subscribe to me at OnlineCelloLessons.org, uh, YouTube channel. And uh, if you want to learn more, um, please check out my website, OnlineCelloLessons.org. I have an uh, entire beginner's course there um, and intermediate and advanced lessons as well. So uh, definitely check that out. Lastly, uh, please be sure to check out my video on the bow and how to hold the bow and play the open strings. Um, that's definitely the next step once you know these finger patterns and how to uh, pizzicato really well. Um, learning how to use the bow is the next step. So um, I definitely recommend starting with just learning the left hand first and then learning the bow, um, practicing them both separately. Uh, that way when you go to play the scales with the bow, your hands will have uh, a lot more tools together so it'll be easier to play it with both hands together. Um, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions at all, I'd uh, love to hear from you and um, thanks for watching.